Hello everyone and welcome to Control Engineering Tutorials. In this tutorial, I explain how to test the stability of state space models. In particular, we will consider these two state space models and we will test their stability. Here is a brief summary of the procedure for testing the stability. First of all, we start from a state space model in the general state space form given over here. And here I implicitly assume that the state space model is minimal and that there are no pole zero cancellations in the system. In our previous lectures, we explained that the eigenvalues of the matrix A are actually poles of the system. And consequently, we will investigate the stability by computing and inspecting the locations of the eigenvalues of the matrix A. The procedure is, First of all, we construct a characteristic polynomial. How do we do that? Well, over here, we first construct the matrix lambda multiplying identity matrix minus A. Here, lambda is a general complex number. Then, we compute the determinant of such a matrix and we set this determinant to zero. This creates a characteristic polynomial. The solutions, that is the values of lambda, for which this characteristic polynomial is equal to zero are actually the eigenvalues of the matrix A. Then, for asymptotic stability, we need to inspect the locations of the eigenvalues of the matrix A. For the asymptotic stability, all eigenvalues of A must be located in the left half of the complex plane. Or, in other words, if the eigenvalue is a complex number, and if it has a real and imaginary part, the real part of the eigenvalue has to be strictly smaller than zero. That is, the eigenvalues have to be located over here in the complex plane. Here is the complex plane. Here is the real part of lambda. Here is the imaginary part of lambda. For the asymptotic stability, all the eigenvalues of the matrix A have to be here. That is strictly in the left half of the complex plane. Okay, let's immediately solve the first example. Here it is. Let's first recognize our matrix A. Our matrix A is 0, 1, minus 2, 1. The next step is to construct the matrix lambda multiplying the identity matrix minus A. Let's do that. Over here, lambda is a complex scalar, and I will represent it like this. The identity matrix looks like this. It is 1, 0, 0, 1. This is because our system is of the second order. Then we need to write minus A. Minus our A matrix, it is 0, 1, minus 2, 1. Good. Let's continue. Next, let's compute our matrix. So we write lambda I minus A is actually equal to. And let's do this example step by step. First of all, we multiply identity matrix by a scalar simply doing multiplication element wise. So we have lambda, 0, 0, lambda. Okay, so let's continue. Then I will take this minus sign and I will put it inside. What I'm left is with a plus sign and over here I'll have 0, minus 1, 2, minus 1. Then I simply need to add these two matrices and here they are. So I have lambda, I will have minus 1 over here, then I will have 2 over here, and over here I will have lambda minus 1. Okay, so the next step is to compute the determinant of lambda i minus a. So let's do that. Obviously, the determinant of this matrix is lambda multiplying lambda minus 1, and what do I have over here? 2 minus 1 multiplied by minus 1 becomes minus 1. And since I have a minus here, I have plus 2. 
And this becomes lambda squared minus lambda plus 2. The next step is to compute the zeros of this polynomial. The zeros are lambda 1, 2, and over here we will apply the standard formula for computing zeros. For those of you who don't remember the standard formula, namely, if we have a polynomial of the second order or the quadratic equation that looks like this, and if we want to compute the zeros of this quadratic equation, the zeros are defined like this. x12 is minus b plus minus square root of b squared minus 4ac divided by 2a. And let's apply this formula. Over here, let's see what are a, b, and c. a is 1, b is minus 1, and c is 2. So let's apply this formula. We have, in the denominator, we will have 2, since a is 1, and in the numerator, we'll have minus b, this is actually 1, plus minus, let's see what do we have in the square root, in the square root, we have b squared, that's actually 1, minus, what do we have over here, 4, multiplying a is 1, multiplying c is 2, so this becomes... In the denominator, we have 2, and we have 1 plus minus square root of 1 minus 8 is actually minus 7. And finally, lambda 1, 2, I will write them over here, are actually 0 0.5, this is because 1 over 2 is 0 0.5, plus minus square root of 7 multiplying j, where j is the imaginary unit, divided by 2. And that's it. To properly understand the stability of this system, let's illustrate the locations of the computed eigenvalues in the complex plane. Here's the real part of lambda. That is, this is the real axis. And here is the imaginary axis, that is the imaginary part of lambda. Where are these eigenvalues located? Let's see, the real part of both of them is 0 0.5. And the imaginary part is actually square root of 7 divided by 2. It is plus and negative. So here is first eigenvalue with the negative real imaginary part. And here is the second one with the positive imaginary part. Since these eigenvalues are located in the right half of the complex plane, the system is unstable. And this is very important conclusion. That is, this system is not stable. From practical point of view, this means that the response of the system will be oscillatory and it will continuously grow. That is, if this is time, and this is, for example, x1, if you put any initial condition in the system, the oscillations will explode over time. That is, they will look like this. Okay, so here's the second example, and let's repeat the procedure. The first step is to construct the matrix lambda i minus a. So let's do that. We write immediately lambda multiplying the identity matrix 1, 0, 0, 1, minus a. And a in our case is 0, 1, minus 2, minus 3. This is equal to lambda 0, 0, lambda plus 0, minus 1 over here, 2 and 3. Furthermore, this is equal to, let's put everything together, and we have lambda, over here we'll have minus 1, then we have 2, and then we will have lambda plus 3.
The next step is to compute the determinant. The determinant of lambda i minus a is obviously lambda multiplying lambda plus 3 plus 2. And this becomes lambda squared plus 3 lambda plus 2. The next step is to compute the zeros. Let's compute the zeros. Lambda 1, 2 is minus 3 plus minus square root of. What do we have inside? We have 9 minus 4ac, that's basically 4, multiplying 1, multiplying 2, divided by 2, since a is 1. So we have minus 3 plus minus square root of 9 minus 8 divided by 2. And this is minus 3 plus minus 1 divided by 2. Consequently, lambda 1 is minus 3 plus 1 divided by 2. That's actually minus 2 divided by 2. That's minus 1. And lambda 2 is actually minus 3 minus 1 divided by 2. That's minus 2. So here they are. These are the two eigenvalues. Let's illustrate their location in the complex plane. Here is the real axis, that is the real part of lambda. Here is the imaginary axis, that is the imaginary part of lambda. And we can see that one pole is located over here at minus 1, and another pole or another eigenvalue is located over here. Since all the eigenvalues or all the poles are strictly in the left half of the complex plane, the system is asymptotically stable. And that's it. Okay, that's all for today.